Hi guys and welcome to 3D modelling in Blender. So first thing we've got to do is we've got to download Blender. So if you just go to your internet browser and if you go to our website uh, www.games-hub.co.uk um, here you can have a look at some of our other courses that we've got available and also if you click on the downloads tab I'll take you to our download page and you can download Blender. So if you just click on that, I'll take you to the Blender download page and you can select your platform so you can run it on Linux, Mac or Windows. Uh, so mine is uh, running on Mac, so that's fine. So just click download. So once your download's finished, if you just double click on the DNG, it'll open it up. And then all you need to do is just drag your Blender file over into your applications. I've already got it installed, so I'm not going to do that. And then when it's finished, you should see the Blender folder in your applications. And then you can just open up Blender from there. So this is the default uh, view that you always get when you open Blender. It'll come up with this um, sort of menu screen. So if you've got already open projects, you'll see them here, my recent projects. Um, but we're just going to start with this default view. So this is your Blender start file. So when you open Blender, you will always have these three things in automatically. So you'll have your camera, your light, and your cube. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to turn on screencasting so you guys can see what I'm pressing, what keys I'm pressing. So down here you'll see we've got a little mouse so you can see which buttons I'm pressing on there and you'll be able to see what buttons I'm pressing on the keyboard as well. So just keep an eye on these if you get lost and it should give you an idea of what's going on. So when we first open Blender, it looks very complicated, don't really know what's going on. So let's just go through what all these windows are. So this is our main window which is our 3D view. And in each window, you've got a little icon in the bottom corner, uh, which tells you what view you're currently in. So this says 3D view, and you can change these to any of these lists here. So you could change that to graph editor, or the timeline, or the node editor, which we'll be using later. But for now, we just want to keep it in 3D view. So you can move these windows around by using the mouse and taking it to the bottom of the toolbar. If you take it to the top of the toolbar, you'll notice that that will drag that toolbar and it will disappear. So if you do accidentally lose your toolbar and you can't get it back up like this, there's a little plus icon down here in this corner. If you click that, that will bring it back up. So just remember if you're resizing your windows to just do it from the bottom of the toolbar and not the top, because otherwise you'll lose it and it'll disappear. Another thing that's very easy to do in Blender is to accidentally grab one of these uh, hashes in the top corner or the uh, bottom corner and you'll end up dragging out a new window like this. So this is quite easy to do by mistake and you can end up making a complete mess of your layout which is very confusing and you have no idea how to get this back so if you do end up doing something like this hopefully yours won't be quite this bad um, the way that to resize these windows is just go to the hash in the top corner or in the bottom corner and just drag it back over and you'll see you get this white arrow here and that means you're dragging it over this window so it'll resize over this window so I can drag it this way or I can resize it this way. So if we just let go, we can see that that's now closed it over that one. Now, if you can see here, I've got two windows, and one is very small, and the other, this one's very small as well. And I can't resize, uh, nothing's happening. So Blender will only let you resize windows if they're the same size. So with these two, I'd have to resize them either up or down and now that's going to let me 
resize it over that one. So let's just get this view back to how it was before. So I can't go this way and I can't go this way so I'm going to have to do this one down and now I can close that one back over there and I opened up a new one down here as well and I think that's everything back to how it should be. So another thing you can do is create a new layout for yourself so if you're just starting out and uh, you do find that you end up doing this quite a lot it's probably a good idea to make a new layout so if you just come up to your information bar at the top here you'll see you've got default and you've got various different uh, standard views that you can scroll through for various different editing types but we're just going to be using the default one for now so if you want to create your own layout you just click on the plus icon and it's automatically created the new layout default 001 so I'm going to rename that to my layout and hit enter and now that's saved that as my layout and you can see it in the drop down menu here so now if I resize some of these windows oops let's just make a complete mess out of this so if you end up doing this and you've done it too many times and it's really confusing and you just can't work out how to put it all back together just come up to your info bar at the top and then you can just go back to default and that's set that back to default so if we then go back to my layout you'll see it's still got all of these so if we'd done that in uh, default then we'd have had to manually put them back like I'm doing now so that we've got back to our default layout so just make sure that if you do make a complete mess of things that you're doing it on a layout that isn't default so you can always go back to your default layout so I'm going to keep it on my layout for now, just in case I make a mistake. So now I need to hop over into the user settings. So if we come to file in the uh, menu bar, and we go down to user preferences, I'll open up this extra window for us here. And um, we're just going to have a look and see what we can change around some of these things. So you want to make sure if you come to editing tab and you come down to your undo settings, your global undo settings, so I've already got mine set to 200, yours will probably be set to 32, so you want to up this to around about 200, so you just do that by clicking in the box and then typing in 200 and then save user settings. So if you're using a uh, laptop and you don't have a three button mouse, you can emulate your three button mouse by coming into the input settings and then clicking this little tick next to emulate three button mouse. So what this will do is it will allow you to emulate the three buttons. So if you hover over it, it will tell you you can emulate the middle mouse click with alt and the left mouse button. So that's how you do middle mouse if you're using a laptop, but I've got a three button mouse so I'm going to uncheck that for now. Another thing you can do if you're on a laptop or you're using a keyboard that doesn't have the number pad on the side is you can come down here and go to emulate numpad and click on that and then that will allow you to use the numbers at the top of your keypad to scroll through your different uh, view cycles which we'll be having a look at in a little bit. So I'm just going to keep that unchecked because I've got a numpad on my keyboard. And then any changes that you do make just remember to save user settings and that will just save all your settings next time you open up Blender these will all be set. So we're just going to hop back over into interface and you want to make sure that you've got rotate around selection ticked. So mine's already ticked so that's fine. So what this means is it will rotate it will pivot around your selection so whatever object you've got selected in your 3D view it will pivot around that object instead of just pivoting around a random point. Okay so save user settings and close that down.
So now we can start having a look at how we navigate around this 3D view. What we're going to do first is we're just going to learn how to zoom. So zooming is the middle mouse scroll wheel, which will zoom in and out. And so you can go all the way through your object and you can go out quite far as well. So that's zooming. Uh, to rotate, you hold down the middle mouse button and then just move your cursor around and you can see you can rotate around your object and then to pan it's hold down the middle mouse button and shift and then you'll be able to move your object from left to right and move it around your scene now selecting objects it's a little bit different in Blender from most programs. So if you use your left mouse button, you'll see that you're not actually selecting any objects. You're just moving this uh, this target cursor around instead. So that's how you move your cursor around. And we'll explain more about the cursor in a minute. But if you want to select an object, it's right click. And then you can see that that object has been highlighted and you've now got the transform tool in it pivot point. So let's just select the camera and the lamp and the cube and then we can just rotate around that. We can zoom in and out and we can move it from side to side which is great. So just get used to that. Have a little play around. Move your objects about. Move your view about. Just get comfortable with that and we'll move on to the next video. Okay, so now we're going to add in some extra uh, primitive shapes. So currently we have a cube in the middle. So I'm just going to move this cube over. Now, to move you can do it in uh, a couple of ways. So you can either just grab one of these arrows. So that's moving it along the x-axis. And if you look down here, you can see you've got a red line, a green line, and a blue line. So these correspond to these lines on your grid and also your transform tool lines here. So that will move it up and down along the z-axis and this will move it forwards and backwards along the y-axis and then right to left, left to right on the x-axis. So that's one way of moving it and this, if you grab the arrow it will always snap it along that axis so you won't be able to move it freely in space. If you did want to move it not along one of these axes, more freeform moving, if you just press G which is the grab tool you'll then be able to move your cube wherever you want it and then if you right click it will snap back to the position it was in before so if we do that again if we just press G and then we move it and I'm going to put mine over here if I now left click it's going to leave that where it is so if I grab it and I move it over here and right click it's going to snap back and if I grab it, move it over here, left click, it's going to stay where it is. Cool. So I'm going to leave my cube where it is. And I'm going to add in some more geometry. So if we get up our add menu, which is shift and A, I'll bring up our add menu. We've got meshes, curves, loads of different things that we can add in. So we're just going to have a look at the meshes. So these are all your default primitive objects that Blender has. So you've got a plane, so let's add in a plane. And you can see it's put that plane where our 3D cursor was in the space. So if we move our 3D cursor, so if I just move it over here, so if I left click, you can see it's moved that over there. And then I'm just going to add in something different, so Shift A, and I'm going to add in a UV sphere. There we go. And I'm going to put my 3D cursor somewhere else. And then I'm going to shift A and add in a cylinder. Okay. So 
So now we can right click on these to select them individually and then grab to move them around. Or we can move them along different axes using the transform arrows. So that's adding in different shapes and moving them around. So if we wanted one of our shapes to be in the center of our grid, we'd have to move our 3D cursor to be in the center. So we can do that manually, but when you're working in 3D space, you can see it's actually quite difficult to try and get that directly in the center of your grid. So to help us with this, we can bring up our snap menu. So shift and S to bring up your snap menu. And you'll see you've got various different options here. So selection to grid, selection to cursor. So we want our cursor to be in the center. So shift S to bring that back up. So we're gonna do cursor to center. And you can see that now that's put that cursor in the middle. And then if we add in a cube, so shift A to get your add menu up and then cube and you can see it's put the cube right in the middle of our grid. So another thing you can do with a snap menu, so let's just put our cursor up there somewhere. So we've got this cube selected that we've just put in and our cursor's up here. So if we do shift S to bring up our snap menu, we can move the selection to the cursor. So if we select that, you can see it's moved our cube to where our cursor was. And if we put in a cube up here and we realize we don't want it up there, we want it in the middle. So we could bring up our snap menu again and then move our cursor to the center and then move our selection to the cursor. And let's put that back in the middle. Okay, so. Uh, to delete objects out, if you select one and then hit the X, you'll see it comes up with this. Do you want to delete it? Okay. So let's just delete out all the shapes that we've put in. Okay, there we go. So now we've just got a camera and a light in our scene. And our cursor is still in the middle, so I'm just going to add in a cube. So now we're back to our original start file, cubes in the center with our camera and our light. So if you guys just wanna have a play around with that, try moving objects about, adding in different geometry and just getting used to rotating and moving around your objects. And I'll see you in the next video.